Hey guys, Brandon with Flying Miata back for another Facebook Live. Today we're going to talk about catch cans or air oil separators and why you want one. Um, I strongly recommend them is the really short version if you just want to see the short version of this video, uh, buy one. So as always, if you guys have questions, uh, drop them in the comments. If we get to them during the live video, or if we get them during the live video, we'll get to them then. Um, if not, no worries, we'll get them in the comments later. So drop them down in there um, and we will get them taken care of. So what is a catch can? Well, a catch can is an air oil separator. What is an air oil separator? So an air oil separator, much like the name suggests, separates the air from the oil. So what happens when you are driving your car, uh, inside of the engine, inside of the crankcase, there's an oil mist and there's a vapor um, that is air and oil. So your PCV, we don't, actually have a car without a catch can on it right now, but we'll, we'll imagine that these two hoses are attached to each other. So you've got vacuum in here most of the time. You've got some pressure in here. So that vapor, that gross stuff that's in here gets sucked into your intake manifold. Obviously then it gets sucked into the engine uh, where it's burned, um, which is bad actually. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it so that there's only air in here down closer to the head we want air and fuel but right here we don't want anything but air theoretically <clears throat> and yes there's qualifiers with eg or egr and all that fun stuff but we're going to say we only want air when you suck that air oil mixture in uh, the oil decreases the octane of your fuel so that's bad Puts, so this is one of the direct injection versus port injection kind of things. Uh, it, all that junk goes into the engine and it goes past everything. So it's gonna go past your valves. Now on a port injection engine, which is where the fuel is injected prior to the head, which is gonna be all Miatas except for NDs, uh, then fuel sprays on the back of the intake valves there and that's gonna clean it off reasonably well. Um, with an ND, it's direct injection, which means that the fuel is excuse me, injected directly into the combustion chamber, uh, which means that it's not there to clean off the backside of the intake valves. So on an ND or any DI direct injection uh, engine, it's going to be that much more important. And there's all sorts of gross stuff in uh, that air and oil. And I, this is Travis was excited about doing this. Uh, demonstration so we'll do this right now so this is the oil that uh or this is the catch can out of my car here uh i honestly have no idea how many miles this is we'll say 3,000 miles that's a totally random guess but it's certainly more than 20. um so you can see how much i don't know if you want to see how full it is to get an idea of that first so that's what's in there and you see how it's kind of thin and it's kind of separating? Um, that's, that's because there's water. There's condensate in there. There's a lot of gross stuff. It's not quite black, it's kind of brown. Um, and then there's all the really gross, uh, thick, solid stuff that has accumulated for three years of, of use. I've, again, I have no idea, but let's say I've had this catch can on here for seven years, a long time anyway. Um, and this is not crappy oil. Uh, I use the Redline Synthetic religiously uh, that we sell. So that's just kind of the gross stuff that comes out of it. So that's why you want, <clears throat> why you want uh, a catch can. And that's how it's going to help. So how it works. Uh, so this is a brand new shiny version of what's in my car. So basically you have an inlet here and you have an outlet here and they're not specific on this one so whatever but it goes in one side and out the other side so your air oil mixture is going to go in here you can see there's a fine mesh kind of a, a steel wool uh material stainless steel but in there uh and what that does is all the all the droplets of oil stick to this mesh but the air passes straight through the other side. So it's kind of like a filter. It's, it's not a filter like an air filter. Uh, it's, it's more of a coalescence filter where it's just taking it out of suspension. So the oil adheres to this, uh, the air passes straight through, the oil drops out because this goes like here, and then here's your can. So it all, all the gross stuff drops down and you can pour it out there. So um, 
how, well, where does it get installed? So you have two sides to your PCV system. Uh, there's the engine or the intake manifold side, uh, which is actually going to be the exhaust side of the system. And then you have the intake side. So theoretically, vacuum in the intake manifold is going to suck that mist in here into the, uh, into the intake manifold. And then this is going to be your supply of fresh air so that it's not pulling against a vacuum, right? Uh, realistically, it comes out of both sides. Uh, because there is pressure in here, especially with blow by and that kind of thing, that means that it's going to come out of both sides. So where I'm going with that is if you're only going to do one catch can, do it on the intake manifold side. If you're going to do two, which is the right way to do it, and really what I should have, uh, then you want it on both sides here. Um, as far as how to install it, it's ju it just goes in line, you know, um, and you can see the hose here uh, goes from here into the catch can, back out of the catch can, and into the intake manifold. So it'd be the same kind of concept with this thing. Pretty easy. Now, one of the really slick things uh, that we have, unfortunately, we don't have one here to show you, but is the Varus catch can that we have for the NDs. Um, and these, these will most likely work with the other generations. We just don't have a bracket for it. So if you want to buy one of these for another generation, awesome, do it. Bear in mind that you're going to have to come up with your own mounting, but it shouldn't be that complicated. So anyway, uh, I really like this because it has both sides built into one. So we had some questions about what all these hoses are and what's going on. There's too many hoses. Yeah, that's, that's a fair question for sure. So you have the pre-intake. You can see this hose right here hooks up to the intake here and the valve cover here. So this is the, the intake, quote unquote. Um, of the PCV system, and it goes through a catch can in here. And then this is the outlet side, so between the intake manifold and the valve cover, or the crankcase more specifically with this car, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, so that is, has it built in here. The Varus is especially slick inside because it has that stainless steel mesh that I was talking about, but it also has baffles that are machined into it. Uh, and then it has a drain down here so that you can drain it easily yourself. So fun, uh, fun side fact, one of the uh, exciting things about California, uh, catch cans that do not drain to the oil pan are actually illegal, which seems wildly counterintuitive. And if you stay up to date on your ma maintenance, it is. However, if you don't stay up, up to date on your maintenance, you fill up your catch can, then you're actually sucking oil into the intake of the engine, and that's going to be much worse. So that's why we can't ship them to California. So sorry, Californians. Um, now I said that, that, uh, on the ND, it goes to the valve cover and, and it kind of, it, it doesn't, it goes to the crankcase. So again, top side goes to the valve cover, easy peasy, no big deal. You could see that. So it is, it is kind of a mystery where those go, right? Cause they just kind of disappear back in there. Well, they go back here. So this is the same kind of concept as we were looking at on the NA, uh, but it's down here. So this is actually your PCV valve right here, <clears throat> excuse me. And then this is the intake uh, half of that for the intake manifold. So again, it's crankcase as opposed to valve cover, but it's, it's all the same thing, it's all connected. So now on the NCs and the NDs, they do actually have uh, a pretty slick baffling kind of setup in here. Now it is not a catch can, uh, it, it's going to, help the oil come out of suspension because there are channels in there. It does not have any kind of mesh in there, so it's not going to be as comprehensive as either one of our setups. Uh, and also, obviously, there's no drain on that. It just drains right back to the oil pan. Now, the OEs do that for ease of maintenance so that it's not one more thing uh, that the driver has to worry about. So I, I get where they're coming from, but for those of us who are uh, okay investing a tiny amount more time in maintenance in exchange for the long-term health of our engine, Really, really good idea to do that. So um, this, uh, for the intuitive of you, uh, among you, this is a, a bit of a headache to get to uh, when you're installing it. We do have an install video on that, so we can show you exactly um, how to do it. Uh, you will probably still be cursing us, but there are some pretty good hints in there to make it as easy as possible. So 
Um, so anyway, just to show you some different locations, again, that's where the Varus one goes. It's got a bracket. Um, there's a little bit of adjustability in the bracket because it's actually slightly different between the ND1 and the ND2, but you've got them both there. Uh, this, again, my car, has it's mounted to the firewall where it's suggested um, on in the instructions that Moroso includes. And you can see it comes with this aluminum bracket. It actually also comes with... Travis, I lied. I told you I wouldn't need these parts. It also comes with this bracket to stand it off a little bit. I'm honestly not sure why I don't have this on my car. Maybe I didn't have this bracket. I'm not sure. But it does make your life a little bit easier so you can wrap your hand around it. <clears throat> and then on Bob here, you can see we've got it mounted where the washer bottle used to be. So that's a really actually pretty slick place to mount it if you have that capability. And we've got uh, our cappuccino bottle on here. The plastic one is no longer available, but a shameless plug for our new shiny aluminum overflow or a uh, washer bottle that we have. So that is a great way to do that. Obviously the world is your oyster. There are all sorts of places that you can mount it. Uh, if you, the hoses are not long enough, then new hoses are extremely easy to find. So no big deal. Okay. So I think that was my spiel there. We did get a bunch of questions, so I'll go through those now. Again, you have more questions, please drop them in the comments and we'll get to them. So question number one, should I still use my PCV? Absolutely. So the PCV is intended to keep pressure from flowing into the, into the crankcase from the intake manifold. If you have a boosted car, yeah, you really don't want to pressurize the crankcase. Uh, you're probably gonna do that anyway because the PCV valves are not spectacular to start off with. If you have not already um, and you've got an NA or an NB, definitely upgrade to our turbo specific PCV. But regardless, short version, yes, leave it in there. Mazda intended it without a catch can. Catch can is serving a different purpose. So leave it in there. Okay, this one, uh, so doesn't the oil that's recirculated back into the engine lubricate the upper cylinder walls? Sure does on a two stroke, um, not on a, on a four stroke. So you have oil rings in the pistons, there's oil, all the oil comes up from the bottom to lubricate stuff. The only thing that should be in the combustion chamber is air and fuel, done. Uh, so no, that is not an, you don't want to inject oil in there. So oil in your, in your combustion chamber is realistically, it's always gonna happen a little bit from a theoretical standpoint, you don't want any in there. Uh, have we done long-term testing and seen improvement? So, no, we have not done scientific testing. Uh, honestly, this testing is enough to prove to me that it's worthwhile because I don't want that stuff in my engine. So, I, I will also say that on this car, again, my personal car, I typically change the oil based on uh, smell and color of the oil. So following that theory with a catch can in it, I think I got up to 8,000 miles and this was with synthetic uh, and the oil still looked great. And I basically just got nervous and changed it because it seemed like it had been a really long time. That was probably three or four years ago, still runs like a dream, doesn't burn a drop, so on and so forth. So no, we have not done any A to B testing, but the theory is pretty well proven and the engines that have them have done a very good job in terms of lasting a long time. And this is mostly street, sometimes track, and it's got 130, 140,000 miles on it, you know, a fair amount of power, whatever. So I would say, yes, we have tested it at least to some extent. <clears throat> Excuse me. So for stock and healthy engine engines, is it a beneficial thing? Yes, I still think so. And I think especially so, uh, again, for the direct injection engines, the NDs, but I would put them on any of them. I have four cars at home and three of them have catch cans and one of them doesn't have a catch can because I just haven't quite gotten around to it. And actually they're all internally stocked. This one might be making a little more power than it came from Mazda with, but the other ones are actually stock and I still have them on there and they still pick up junk and they still seem like a very, very good thing to do. So yes, I would do it. Is your engine going to melt into pieces if you don't have one? No. Are you gonna get a shorter lifespan out of your engine? Probably, but shorter doesn't mean short. 
I would still expect a long lifespan, but if you want to help it out as much as possible, catch can. What works with the V8 conversion? So with the V8 conversion, the Moroso catch can will work fine. The routing is a little bit different, although the concept is the exact same. So you do have two valve covers, so you have to bring those together, then go through the catch can, then go into the intake manifold. But again, the, the concept is the exact same. So yeah, it'll work just fine. Downsides to running catch cans with an open breather. Uh, well, if my buddy Daryl is watching this, he could tell you because he has an exo set that used to have an open breather and he kept getting oil all over his helmet because uh, he didn't have a, a hood on it either. Basically, if there's the theory is that there's a filter on the, I mean, it would be on this side, but say you've got your valve cover, you've got your catch can, and then there's just a filter on the other end of it. Well, that's great when it's working in theory and it's all going this way, getting sucked into the intake manifold. When you're pressurizing the crankcase, then it's going to go backwards and it's going to come out of that filter and you'll get an oil spray. You might get a little bit, you might get a lot under the engine uh, or under the hood. <clears throat> you may uh, get a little film on your helmet visor because you're driving an exoset that doesn't have a hood on it. So I am not personally a big fan of the, uh, of the filters on the end there. The other thing to bear in mind is that if you have a car that's still running stock engine management, you cannot run a filter there because that's gonna let unmetered air into the system. So that's air that the computer has no idea it exists. So the car is not gonna run appropriately. Is it gonna be catastrophic? No, probably not, but it's not gonna be right either. So leave it all plumbed together. <clears throat> With a Mazda speed, should I change the stock air oil separator? The stock one's okay. Um, the stock one, the stock one does a decent job of separating stuff out. Uh, the stock one does drain back to the oil pan, which is two problems. One, it drains back to the oil pan. So, and, and I've already spoken about how I don't really like that. You could do something like put a ball valve in the end of that hose and then cap the piece that goes onto the oil pan. If you're going to do that, I would actually recommend an aluminum plate to cap the oil pan because I don't really trust rubber caps. I've had decent luck with silicone caps. However, silicone and oil don't get along well together. So I would um, just fabricate a simple aluminum plate, block that off, and then uh, run a drain on it. You could do that. These are going to do a more comprehensive job of filtering it, and it's a really easy way to catch it all together. So if you wanna do that, awesome. If you wanna put one of these on the intake side, of it and then you want to leave the stock one on the uh, exhaust side of it oh no actually sorry it's been a while since i've looked at a mazda speed i think the mazda speed catch can is actually on the intake side of it so you could add one of these to the intake manifold or the exhaust of the uh, crankcase side of it and still get the benefit of not burning all that junk in the engine. So a little bit of a gray answer there, I guess. So let me know if I didn't answer that completely, but short version, I would probably leave it where it is, put a ball valve in it, and then add another one to the intake manifold. Okay, where are the tubes going on the Varus? I think I covered that. That was a, a good, very good question there for sure. I've heard these are almost a must have for DI engines. How much do they actually reduce carbon buildup on intake valves and why don't manufacturers put a better system in from factory? Again, manufacturers don't want to force us to drain something. Also emissions laws say that they can't force us to drain something or at least California's. I'm not sure of all the, all the ins and outs there. So that's why they don't do it. You can see again that Mazda did do a kind of as much as they could do without any without adding any maintenance to it. So there there are the baffles to try to decrease the amount of oil mist that actually gets into the intake manifold. I'm sure it, we haven't done any scientific testing. I'm sure it does work. I'm also sure it doesn't get all of it. Uh, we did check out the intake valves on one of our ND engines with pretty low miles, and it was kind of not great. Um, we actually spoke to some people about it, and it seemed like it gets to that point and then it doesn't get a, a whole lot worse. That's what we were told. Short version, I would do it. Again, I'm not gonna tell you that your engine's gonna 
explode. If you don't, you don't have to have to, but I would recommend it for the long-term health of your engine. If I, if I had an ND, which I really want one, um, then I would have one for sure. Have we ever analyzed what comes out of, an AO, uh, out of a, a catch can? Uh, well, we've used our eyeballs and it's disgusting, uh, but still totally valid question as far as the Blackstone oil analysis. We have not done that. Uh, that would actually be a pretty intriguing experiment. So we might have to do that. So, but as of right now, no, we have not. Dealer says the catch can will void the warranty on my 2021. What else should I do? Well, for one, not real sure the dealer is actually right on that. Now, the warranty stuff is really vague. Um, I saw a reference in the comments to it being the dealer having to prove that what you did caused the failure. They're referring to the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act. Um, as far as aftermarket, that, that is totally applicable as far as aftermarket replacements of stock parts. Its applicability, if that's a word, to the to additional parts is a little more gray. That having been said, a catch can is not going to do anything. You know, if your catch can comes apart and parts of it go into the intake and that kills the engine, sure, that would void the warranty. It's not really plausible, but I can see that situation causing a voided warranty. Outside of that, it's not going to happen. And if they try to say, well, we're not going to replace your transmission because you have a catch can, they're out of their mind. And I would push them hard on that because that's just not plausible at all. So personally, I wouldn't be real concerned about it. And if your dealer says that, I'd probably find a different dealer. <clears throat> okay, uh, this is kind of kind of sort of talked about it before, but how much of a difference does it truly make? It pulls out all this disgusting stuff. And again, in my experience with very non-scientific uh, sniff and look test, uh, it, it allows me, it basically keeps the oil alive much longer. So how to mount with an Edelbrock supercharger on, on an ND, I'm assuming. Uh, I don't know, but it should be pretty straightforward. So with an Edelbrock, <clears throat> basically this intake, this naturally aspirated intake manifold gets replaced with a forced induction intake manifold. Kind of, sort of. So there has to be a hose that runs from the PCV to the supercharger. Just put your catch can in between that. That's all it is. So find where this hose goes to and put it in. Um, I would recommend uh, looking, looking at the routing, seeing how accessible the routing is and making sure you know what you're in for before you buy the catch can. I would still absolutely recommend it for all the, all the reasons I've spoken about uh, over and over again, but I don't know how difficult it's gonna to be to access with an Edelbrock, so I would make sure you know what you're getting into as far as that's concerned. Will running a catch can interrupt or alter the vacuum pressure? No. Uh, if something Anyway, no, I can, I can come up with reasons why maybe something has catastrophically failed with a 0.00001% chance of happening kind of thing where it maybe blocks it, but still that's, going, that's not gonna give the crankcase pressure a place to uh, escape and only if both sides have failed. Whereas the vacuum is generated by the engine and pulled into the intake manifold and so on and so forth. So really short version, no, not a concern. As long as they don't have a breather. Uh, mm, kind of, well, yeah. So if you have a breather, actually, okay. So that's a good point. So if you have a breather on this side, say you don't have a catch can and you just put a filter here, uh, which actually is a fairly common thing to do, which I also don't like for the reasons that I've mentioned, then it won't really affect your vacuum in here but it will affect the reading that the ECU gets. So if you are running a stock ECU with a mass airflow sensor, anyway, uh, if you have a standalone ECU that's a manifold absolute pressure, which just reads the pressure in the intake manifold as opposed to measures the amount of air going past the sensor pre-manifold, uh, see now I've gotten myself confused, but if you have a stock ECU, don't put a filter on it it won't run properly. It'll cause some, some slight issues there. If you have a standalone computer that's running a map, 
uh, then you can do it. I still don't recommend it for all the reasons, but you could do it. So if that makes sense. How often should I empty it? Excellent, excellent question. So when you first install a catch can, I would probably do it weekly or so. Hopefully, theoretically, you will find very, very little in there. With, with actually all of my cars, I do it once, uh, or I do it with each oil change, rather. Uh, they're all old, but they're all reasonably healthy old, so I absolutely get stuff out of it, but I don't have any concerns about filling it up. If you are blowing a lot of oil smoke, if you have reason to suspect that your engine is not healthy, then, uh, then, then definitely check it more often. Uh, if you have a lot of blow-by, this is not the solution. This is a way to get all of the extra junk that's being forced into the intake manifold out of that because there's so much pressure in the crankcase and it's putting that much more of this air and oil mist into the intake manifold and therefore into the engine. This can filter that out, but that's not your actual problem. That's a symptom, not the cause. You need to address the cause. So hopefully that answers that question. Would a catch can be worth it on a daily driver in a humid climate? Absolutely. Again, I like catch cans on everything. Uh, they also, as I kind of showed with this thing, they pull out a fair amount of condensate. And particularly if you have a very short commute where you're not burning that condensate up, you're not getting it hot enough to get it out of that, then this is going to do a very good job of pulling that out for you. So again, I think all of them need it, but I think a very moist climate is going to need it that much more. So uh, yes, do I need a catch can for fill in the blank? Yes, almost definitely. Travis, do we have any questions? We have a few. I think you've covered most of them, but I'm just going to read them off. And okay. then you can elaborate if you want to. Sure. If we've already covered it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so Karsten asks, on the NB, the hose in the exhaust side goes to the intake. Should you let the catch can breathe free and not um, from the intake tube? So I think he's asking about it. Yeah, back, circling back to the filter thing. Can you do it? Yes, as long as you have a standalone ECU. Should you do it? No. Um, in my personal view, there should be a filter on the end of your intake. There can be a filter on your bypass valve, your blow-off valve, if you have a standalone ECU and only if you have a standalone ECU, and that should be it. Um, I am not a fan of putting a filter on the valve cover, on the catch can, whatever. I think that whole system should be enclosed within the intake system. And yes, granted, this hose goes to here and then immediately goes to, <clears throat> goes to an air filter, but they're far enough apart that any oil mist that comes out of here, well, they're far enough apart and more importantly, the airflow is going this way. So any oil that comes through here is gonna get sucked into here. It's not gonna come out of here. Whereas if I just had an, an air filter on there, it would come out of the air filter. So hopefully that answers that question. If not, let us know. Um, so I think, sorry, I'm reading those as well. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, we have a couple more. Mm -hmm. um, advantages to running on a non-boosted car. Still same thing. So the other uh, two cars in my fleet that I mentioned that uh, have catch cans are not turboed. They are naturally aspirated. They still have catch cans. They still pull stuff out. It is, I would say that it is more important with a turbo car or with any forced induction car because your crankcase pressure is likely to be that much more, which is going to force that much more of the mist out. So I would put a priority on it with the forced induction car. That having been said, I would absolutely still use it on a naturally aspirated car. Which do we recommend for Habu V8 conversions? Whatever fits. <laughs> so this is a pretty small, pretty easy to fit kit. Um, it is intended for Miatas with Miata engines. Really the only place that matters is hose size. So if you have a uh, Habu, then you can go to Moroso. Maybe they have one specifically for an LS3 with different hose sizes, or you just get this thing, uh, this kit, with the knowledge that you may need to replace the hose barbs that go in here and the hose, the rubber hose that you use to actually connect to the engine, because those engines may have a different size. Outside of that, this will work fine. And, and you know, maybe you have to get creative with the bracketry and that type of thing, but 
Uh, that's kind of part of the deal with that. So uh, this engine was never supposed to be there in this chassis. So people are probably not going to make a complete kit that matches the chassis and the car outside of us, I suppose. But anyway, should be a pretty easily solved thing with a little bit of ingenuity and fabrication. Here's a fun one. Okay. Can I use a catch can with two imports and a filter on the top for a race car? So my, my answer doesn't change, really. So you, you can do that. Uh, I guess if it's two imports, what's it doing is my question, because if it doesn't have an in and an out, and they're both going in. Oh, sorry. I, I, okay, I get what you're saying now. I, you probably could. I'd have to think about it, but I wouldn't. I would, I would do a normal setup still. There are a lot of questionable catch can installations out there. And I'm not necessarily saying that, that this one, this is one of them. I'd have to look at it and, and think about it a little more. But there are some where the concept is not fully realized. Um, there are some where it's very fully realized and it's done extremely well. Um, for that, you, you could, you could, but you'd still have the potential for oil mist coming out. So I personally, I would not recommend it. I wouldn't do it. Um, we had another question about the breather filter. I'm going to skip. Um, and this next one's kind of specific. Does a stock ND1 need or benefit from one if it's already got 100,000 miles on it? Sure. It's always beneficial. Um, it's just getting worse. Again, I'm not trying to say that you absolutely have to have one or your engine's only going to last 101,000 miles, but if you have one, it'll last 300,000 miles. That's not it. But it's still, again, even... So this, this car had at least 100,000 miles on it when I put it on, and it's still beneficial. It's still pulling all this junk out of there, and that's that much junk that's not going into the oil supply, even if we're ignoring the intake valves uh, and such. Yes, Travis, it looks like you just saw something noteworthy. Well, this is a good question. Okay. How do you tell if a catch can is actually a good product? Because I've seen them with the mesh, without the mesh, just with baffles. How do you tell what's a good catch can and what isn't? So the really short version is make sure that whatever it is has a very comprehensive way to get the oil out of suspension and then drain it down into a receptacle or potentially back into the oil pan, which again, I don't recommend, but is better than nothing. So actually one of the things that I neglected to mention on the Varus, <clears throat> it has the baffles, like I mentioned, it has a stainless mesh, like I mentioned, it also has coalescence filters. So on the end of each of these guys, there's a little white filter that's not meant to filter out every single possible thing. It's just, again, meant to bring that air or bring the oil out of suspension in that air oil mix. So it's, it's encouraged to come out of suspension three ways. The Moroso is very good. I have an abundance of faith in them. Moroso makes awesome products. If we're being pragmatic, it only does it one way. Now it is one very comprehensive way and is very dense with the mesh, denser than that to be fair, but it's only one way. So I hope that answers the question. So if, if it's just baffles, I wouldn't trust it. If it's an in and out into, you know, like this, but with no mesh, nah, it's worthless. It's not gonna do anything. And you want to make sure that it's something that will last. I did kind of try to cheap out with a compressed air filter, something or other that I saw on a forum somewhere. And I picked up at my local Harbor Freight and it worked okay for a few months. And then the whole thing just kind of fell apart, which I can't fault them for because that's not the appropriate application. So be aware of using things in the appropriate application. It, you know, I'm all for reappropriating stuff, but if it's made for ambient temperature and you're sticking it under a 200 degree engine bay, it's probably not gonna last. So that kind of thing. What else, Travis? That's it? Okay. Um, then I think that is it. Thank you for uh, tuning in as always. If you have more questions, drop them in the comments. We'll get to them after the fact. We'll put links in the comments. We'll put links in the comments to these guys, uh, the Moroso and the Varus. 
Be sure to like, subscribe, do all of the social media things, and uh, tune in next week. We'll be back again for another Facebook Live. Thanks, guys. We'll see you.